Hello, hello, and welcome to the second episode. As you remember, we were doing the filter component last week and we were not completely satisfied. So today I want to show you the secrets of using different models, using different and less and more detailed prompts and also what will be generated in the end. And since Claude just launched a new model, Sonnet 4.5, we will also use it immediately and compare the result. So let's get in. So I have to plug this in because Claude released a new model, Sonnet 4.5, and they promise us that it can code for 30 hours straight. And what we will do today is we will test our filters also directly in Claude, and then we can compare the result. Let's do it. So first I want to show you what I got in the end. So this was this one was made with cloud code and as you remember we had this filter and when when you select something you apply it then the plus icon changes to x so this works completely fine here and i can also add a new filter choose something else here and then the this one is immediately updated if i click again i can clear filters i have to apply it um, and I can also clear it with just pressing the X. The weird interaction is that the filter disappears. However, this one was the most, I mean, was the closest to the end design. And the cool part was that Claude immediately added this demo control. So for example, I can add filter here or I can add color um, and I can add more and then it creates some example ones and immediately added also the drop down also the logic works and i really like these demo controls and now let's check what happened with the gpt5 codex so what i got here is something that's completely fine so i still have the filter i have the plus button which looks different than in my design I also got um, a drop down somehow tool mixed with tooltip style and I can exclude the rules, apply here and the interactions don't work. And I can remove the filter and it disappears. And that interaction is also weird. And if I press on X, I can also have this interaction. I can just see, okay, this works. And I can now also see that two of them are selected but not which are which ones but this could be solved and now let's compare the latest one so filter chip component made with code supernova model it has the biggest context window here so it's one million but it didn't go so well so i changed it i use clot 4.5 so we can have something that works and as you can see the drop down looks different here and by default i mean this is actually default state so that's why the um, plus is still available but as soon as i select active plus changes to x so the logic works and it's also cool that i don't have additional clear all filter here but i can i mean i should be able to click on x but it doesn't work so I have to click here, clear all, but <laughs> then again, everything disappears. And I'm not really sure why code supernova added this event lock because I cannot change anything or have something similar that I have here, that I had here for adding some demo controls. But let's go back to cursor and I want to show you prompts and also the logic behind. So in the previous episode, I just added a simple general prompt create a filter component. But in reality, this is not how it should be done. We should have a document where we share all the important things for our component. And here I wanted to share with you what I added for this improved filter. So we can start here, paste your Figma link, and you just share whatever you want to build. And then you describe the task, create an interactive filter chip component, that matches the Figma design with these behaviors. And then what we want for core functionality. We want all state unfiltered and then of course selected state filtered. Then state switching, interactive drop down, what happens there, dynamic content and remove action. And then we describe 
interactions. So for example, our default state component shows initial appearance from Figma. Then what happens when we click? Then uh, make selection, apply changes, and then also clear and remove. User can reset or delete the filter. And then we move on to technical requirements. You describe everything you want. So is it React? Is it something el else? Do you just um, do you want a simple HTML component? In okay, so everything that needs to be included should be written here. For example, I use font awesome icons, so it would be cool that everything's here implement icon switching between states as shown in design and please and always use font awesome oh. font awesome okay and then we have implementation guide if you want to add more specifics so you have analyzed figma first this is always the first step because we want cursor or cloud to check what we what we have in Figma and also follow it. And then extract tokens, plan interactions, build component, and then also test. And how cursor will know that it was successful, we want visual design match. Figma state transitions work smoothly. Drop down selection is shown. Then component integrates with parent application accessible via keyboard and works on mobile and desktop. And of course, only then we can talk about having a functional filter component. So now let's check what was going on. I added this stuff before because usually it takes a lot of time to go through all of these prompts. So I wanted a danced, danced video for you so you don't have to wait a lot of time, but you have the most important information. So I pasted the prompt that I just explained here and I added Figma link and then I chose, as mentioned be before, GPT-5 codex. In the previous episode, I mentioned that Figma is added when you see this ran get code and also ran get screenshot. And now you can actually see it so it's even easier and it's more visual and you know that the proper design is actually applied and used here. And then it was, you know, changing stuff and also it added to do's. So revise, filter, chip markup, implement styles and build JavaScript. So the only thing I added then was that everything has to be put under filter GPT-5 in this one. And then just show one little line for drop down. It was a lot of stuff in there remove filter and clear at the same time because we had two buttons for the same interaction and as you can see this was it and let's go back and check what was here so as you can imagine for five minute work this is quite an awesome job it used everything that we wrote the only thing that was not added before and i just added as you saw uh, was please use the font awesome icons Okay, use font awesome for X and plus icon. We press enter and then we wait and see what happens. So the second prompt was completely the same. You know, I, I pasted Figma link, copy pasted the prompt from the left side and it also used the MCP ran get code, screenshot and then also every separate component. We have a to-do list here and as you can see, it was actually more work. It created a demo file, but the first thing that I got was something completely different and it also didn't work. Although I got the successful state here, so interactive filter chip component is complete, but <laughs> nothing worked. So I wrote, please check Figma designs again. So as you can see, it went through everything again. And then I see several important differences from the Figma design. And then it started to change. And here I also changed the model to Cloud 4.5. So, so to the newest model. And it created a readme file with everything that was done. But still in this use case I didn't get the components. So when I pressed on the demo HTML 
it didn't work so everything was hidden and I had to intervene that components don't load for me but in the end everything was fine and I just created a new empty markdown file so this is what we are reading now and I really encourage you that once you are successful with your components and you like what you've got that you instruct your ChatGPT or uh, cursor or cloud that it has to write a file for you so when you come back and you want to reuse it that you can just copy paste it and you can also say please write a markdown file for me that i can reuse it so 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 in this case when you have all the files you can really improve them and also when the models change like claude introduced a new one you can immediately check the same prompt and see what you've got you know and then you can learn what to change or adapt so this is my example where i track all the components that i do and wipe code and the idea is that everything um, or any component that you have as a part of the system is accessible in the index file and i can just click and see you know the header variants etc and I can easily go back because everything is connected. And yeah, we will slowly but surely build this together. So stay tuned. Okay, Figma introduced remote MCP server last week. So what's the difference? Previously, you had to run your own Figma desktop app and then local MCP server. But now you can also connect to the remote MCP server which connects directly to the Figma hosted endpoint here. What does that mean? That you don't have anything locally, you can just connect and also use, for example, Replit. And of course, we are here to test things and let's do it. Okay, so what happened with my prompt and Replit things? But here we can see the message from Replit. I see the Figma link didn't provide detailed content and let me proceed with creating a plan for your filter based on the requirements. So it only took what we've written and not the design. I mean, I have to admit that it looks good, but of course this is not my component. It also added interactive states and everything. But you know why this happened? Because I didn't connect Figma before. So if you want to connect Figma, you have to click here, import code or design click on Figma design and then you will be prompted with um, one model where you will just sign into your account and that's it. And once you do that, you can also start immediately by copy and pasting your Figma links directly on the homepage. But now let's check and oh, let's check because of course I added now the proper link again and want to see what will happen now. Okay, so the component was actually updated. It looks more like my component. The paddings are not the same, but the functionality works. And since I didn't have any drop downs, the look and feel are actually following the Figma designs. And it also updated component states here. So we have all states, unfiltered, and then also with search or when the filter is applied. So this looks quite cool and quite promising again we didn't spend much time so we use the same prompt and replit and i encourage you to test it because with replit you can also build your own apps and then deploy them and this is also the tool that i'm using for the name your design tokens website where you can play and add what you want and it will automatically generate all the design token names for you so the prompt that we were using for filters was quite detailed. Now let's check what happens if you use a simple prompt. More details than on the first episode, but still quite simple. So in this case, I only added build a reusable React input component that matches this Figma specs. And then use CDN React plus plain CSS and include states default, focus, disabled read only error and success for my input fields and then different options for the icon and put it to the folder input and that was it 
So we can see that the input component demo was successfully done and we can also see what were the tasks. So create React demo, implement CSS and then showcase component variants. And then we have a summary here, what was added and then what are the next steps. Please check the colors in Figma file again and use that colors. So what happened was that I got an input field which had a completely different colors. And then it ran over again and it checked the colors. New summary color alignment. Please use font awesome again and also check the paddings and the height. So what happened in the end was that every input field looked quite good but I couldn't use anything as an inter interactive component. I wanted to add my own text. So I said, make the default state interactive so I can write anything in the input field. And then it started to change. So let's check what I got in the end. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so this is component. So wipe input component. It added framework React, what's using, styles, plain CSS, and then also specs and the link to my Figma file. And this was done without my input automatically. So I mentioned that this first input field should be interactive and I can write anything here. Hello, whatever. Then we have the focus state and disabled state, read only state, error, success state, and then also with icons and hint. So a lot of different variants are shown here and it's much, much easier to play with this. If this would be my component that I also want to share with my team, I would play more. So to make this card bigger, to add more do's and don'ts, you know, so you can really play with documentation part as well. But for two to five minutes of work, I think this is quite good. And in this case, I used GPT-5 codex um, model. I will paste the prompt also in the description below, so you can just copy and paste it, add your own Figma file, and then let me know what happens. In the next episode, I will show you how to install Cloud Code as an extension, which they just published yesterday. And I will show you what are the differences if you're using the terminal, and maybe you will fall in love with Cloud Code so much that you will not use this chat anymore and you will switch to Cloud Code. Yes, yeah, so you are invited to subscribe and follow for more. See you!